Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Or evening. Good evening. Or tomorrow, depending on where, where whoever you are is. And when you see this. Oh, they're having a conversation ah, about time zones. I see. That's nice. It's Hello, 2 Hineka. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time then. Yeah, but there, Inika is live with us. Rosalind was confused. Something about 2 p.m. EST. That's still three hours away from now. Holland, if, Inica, you're, yeah. if you look on Facebook, Facebook will tell you the time it is for you. So whatever you see the announcement in the group, it is for you that time. So when I'm in Holland, it would have... Rosalind, what that meant was that was two and a half hours ago. It was just a way of saying whoever happened to look at that you have to wait two and a half more hours. Uh -huh. That was posted at 7.30 this morning. 8.30, 9.30, that's 2.10, that's a half an hour. Two and a half hours from 7.30 in and the morning is 10 o'clock, and here we are. And there is Bonzo. I can't explain it any better. I, I'm sorry, I just, I'm not able to say it in any more clear language. Good morning, Ro. Occasionally some people see this and see that, and they... they it, what it does is it takes, it causes the post to show up at the top of the page because I've added something. Mm -hmm. Well, at the timestamp is, it's, it's in very bold words on there. It tells you the time that it's going to be up there. If you were to have looked ahead, you would have seen a big gray box and it says on there something like the Swami Janeshwar will go live at, and for you it would say 11 a.m. because it knows what time zone you're in. Anyway. Anyway. We have hot chocolate. We have hot chocolate. That's it's a little chilly outside, and so in yeah. celebration we have hello Nelly. Hello. We have hot chocolate. That's a pretty good deal. Mm. Om tat sat. Om tat sat. Ramanas. Hello, Ramanas. <laughs> Happy to see us. Nice. Yes. Okay, we were pondering. We wanted to. What did I call this? I know it's very fancy. I I made, I made fancy words called living with opposition to traditional yoga. Yes. I don't Hi, know. Bee. There's B. Hi. And the bee. hmm is for the hot chocolate. And the hmm from Roseanne. I guess that hmm. Let me have another hmm here. Maybe one day we'll make Rose. Here, here's to Roseanne. Here's to Roseanne. Hmm. Mm. I heard the door open there. Yeah. It must be a Raj. It is. It is a Raj. It's Mr. Bonavara. Mr. 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 Bonavara is yeah. leaving us today. Yes. So that's your farewell hot chocolate there on the counter, oh. sir. Thank oh, you, you gave much. him the big Starbucks cup, huh? That's the one he always takes. I see. When he comes. He immediately goes for the big deeds. Well, anyway, I, I the the the, the thing speech. that prompted this conversation was sort of to make mention of it, because for a variety of different reasons, which I guess is what we wanted to chat about a little bit. Mm -hmm. There actually is, and you, some of you already know this. Probably most of us already know this. There is often a degree in our cultures of opposition to traditional yoga. If, if you are, if a person is hanging out in a good, you know, modern, the average modern yoga studio, or is involved in a yoga teacher training program, there is, usually 
very little engagement with traditional yoga as we keep talking about it in the sense of meditation and contemplation and self-realization and atman and all of that stuff that we keep doing and keep talking about. It's just not much there. And if somebody who is involved in that setting, whether as just a customer of that studio or as a teacher in that studio or as a member of that place's yoga teacher training program, and because I know this because I hear it from people, and, and you start pursuing the subtler meanings of yoga, there is a very common sort of pushback, is a, I guess is a term that is in common language, a pushback. The environment pushes back against you because you're yeah. stepping outside of what's normal. It's not only a resistance, it's even pushing. Yeah, there's a resistance. A resistance. I, we used to, on the title of this thing, we put opposition. It's just the word that came to mind, but the word resistance is a very good word, too. And what was the other word? Just we just said pushback. Pushback. Yeah, pushback. I said it. Yes. And so there's a pushback or resistance or there is an opposition. And the spirit of why we wanted to talk with you just a little bit about this today is not to complain about them or anything like that. But it's very useful for us to simply understand that this is the reality of the world we live in. It's just the reality of our environment. And like it or not, we simply must accept that reality <coughs> yeah. and go on. Not a, except not a fool. <clears throat> Another one that I've heard <clears throat> that is a common resistance or opposition to what we're doing <clears throat> occurs in a marriage or a close relationship where one of the people starts getting involved with meditation practices and all of the and the kind of satsangs we're doing. In fact, that what's coming to mind humorously, I say this has happened quite a few years ago. It was now about 15 years ago that I published my Yoga Nidra CD. And there was one woman who when she would go to bed at night, it, was, it wasn't it was suggested way of using the recording, the guided practice, but it's what she started doing. She would do her yoga nidra. She had, you know, earphone things and, and a CD player, and she'd be laying in bed at bedtime in the evening, listening to that and going through that before she fell asleep. Instead, of, you know, she didn't like do it, you know, on the floor an hour before sleep. She did it at bedtime and. Uh, and she would listen to that mm. and and her husband. Finally, one day said to her, you know, I'm getting tired of sleeping with that Swami every night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and so. The husband, he meant it humorously, but he also really meant it sincerely. It was a little bit, when it was not cry. strong. It was an outcry. There's another good word. There was a little outcry. I want my wife back. I want my wife back. She's sleeping with this damn Swami again. <laughs> Hi, Leela. Hi, Leela. We got boxes from Rose. We got boxes from Roseanne. We don't I know. I think what that they're. icon is not known to our computer. That's why we get boxes. Yeah, let's totally see what if it shows up there. The no, it will shows show up little that, boxes. Let us know what it is. Raj will open it up and tell us. I know of a couple who both sleep with you, Samaji, at the same time when they go to bed. Mm hmm. Well, this was part of the story, was she used the, the earphone thing, yeah. Cinda. But he knew what she was doing. Mm hmm. And so that's a humorous version of that thing. But I do hear it from people that your family doesn't know what you're doing. It, you know, if you were just getting in the car and driving down to that yoga studio and doing a little physical exercise for an hour and then and then coming back home, that would be OK. And you get a little bit more flexible. In you bed. get a little more flexible <laughs> yeah, in bed. 
And so for that, it's a little it's bit a, like, like a rolling it's rolling. like going and getting a workout at the gym. And of course, there's a lot of modern postural yoga classes being taught in gymnasiums. So it gets blended together like that. And so you have a family environment like that. You can get a pushback from religious people, whether your family or friends or co-workers, because of the consideration that says, oh, that is part of a foreign religion. And that's in conflict with our religion. And so, again, there can be an opposition. There can be a pushback. Because there is a general fear for the unknown if you are removing yourself from the normal whatever normal is within whatever group it is that's abhidavesha that's the what are you looking for i was looking for my little folder thing is it in the i don't know it's, it the the first time, it's the first time i'm on the couch actually Sanjee, with you since i'm back this time yeah mm -hmm. you folder with all the lamps there here there. Right next to you, Sami. Right. Yeah, put just where it was supposed to be, just so I can always get at it. And there is what I was looking for, the famous or infamous bell curve. And so, you know, in the bell curve, that there's the category called most people. And that's most of our co-workers and most of our family and most of our friends and all like that. But for some of us, we, we keep moving a little bit further out into the, to the minority. I think we're not even there right now. On that bell curve. We're, we're even off the chart. Anyway, it's just the bell curve. Uh, that came to mind when you were yeah. talking. So no, I said, well, I'll get it. So if the custom is that you wake up every morning at 10 and go to work at 11, then if you start waking up at 6 and go to work at 7, you're an anomaly. You're and, an it will, anomaly. and it will That's be like, you're sure. crazy. You're well, waking up about, so early. Think about going back to your home to practice in the evening instead of going to the bars. I mean, just, I just, in, whatever. In the, okay, say more about yeah. it. So you I'm go home to practice already, instead of go to the bar. Yeah, I mean, if that is the normal thing, there's so much resistance to actually not go to the bar with your colleagues or friends, but go home and practice. That's so, what you run into sometimes. Yeah, people don't want to do that. So the co workers are giving you that pushback. No, I'm just saying it could happen, not me. Or could. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't want to go outside their normal, comfortable comfort zone. And on top of that, and don't want you to do it either. Yes, I was that, gonna say, this that's, is that's this the is the aspect of this yeah. thing that caught my attention as she and I were chatting about this. That this is something we need to be aware of. Okay, the whole group eat me, eats meat, and you decide to not eat meat, which is a common thing, some or stop eating dairy or whatever. It's not only that you know the the colleagues or the the group, the rest of the group might think you're weird. You also you also highlight that you want to change something that is for them. So it's like you're not part you're of not gonna us change anymore, me. anymore. Yeah. And so well, what's wrong with, with what we're doing? And then actually you feels are, it as an attack. You, you are the oddball. It, you are the one that's different. And feel it as different. an attack to what you're doing because you kind of. With no oil food. I, mean, I, I know, not, yeah. My colleagues know that I don't eat. And uh, I can feel the resistance and every time there yes. is oily food. And they go for it, but they make fun of it. You know, it's, it's, it's because unconsciously they, they know, for example, the oil because you well, as most of you, why. as most of you hit, uh, most everybody in these satsangs know, we are, are the physical ashram is in a relatively small town of I don't know fifty thousand people or something like that, and so. And most, of, of course, of our satsangs are with all of us who are all over the place. But over the past few years, as we have more and more refined our food, you know, we ended up with a, a virtual mutiny around here. There were people that used to hang out here at the ashram and come visit, and they actually got very, very angry. Yeah, and I think what, what you're trying to say with this satsang when you came up with the title is in a sense that's that's just an expected um, uh, an acknowledged an acknowledge, um, behavior or acknowledge effect of 
of of your changing and i think you can if you know it yeah I, then you are and, not and i'm pausing because i'm resisting the term expecting because i don't i don't i don't want to have and i don't want to plant the seed in anybody else yeah. accidentally of having an expectation that people right. are going to push against you True. because if we create if we call it expectation guess what we our unconscious mind will create it yes. say okay you expect to run into this and so it's part for me it's part of the caution i say mm, nice. uh, about even mentioning this at all in it's the in the first place maybe it shouldn't even be spoken of but in balance i thought no uh, we should mention it and talk about it a little bit and uh, uh because then not, if it happens in say, acknowledgement acknowledgement it, it will be not then a surprise and you can yeah, see yeah to be not surprised yeah you can see for what it is and in a sense, then, then if you if you can recognize it at that moment as resistance of of the normal, so to speak, or resistance of the bell curve, or resistance of the group, or whatever, then you can again very act, very lovingly against it because it's just it's just fear. There's a there. woman like, at the grocery store where we shop who quite likes Matri, and Matri quite likes her, but I've forgotten exactly when it was and how it played out. But she somehow it came up between the two of them, you know, what's her relationship with me? And, you know, and so I'm an old man and she's a young and woman. I'm always with him and we're, very, always, and we're very happy together. And we're happy together. And so, you know, <laughs> think, are, are, are you married? Is he your husband? Is he your husband? And now on top of that, this woman is just a real sweetheart. Yeah. But you can you can see by the jewelry that she wears that she's a good, down-to-earth, all-American Christian lady. Yes. And so there's the potential there. Yeah. It started always commenting on her hair because she's a black woman, so she, she has, she, she, I don't know where she does all this, but she goes to this hair place and they will make something fancy out of her hair every time and it's different. And I really like the way that she plays with so just changing it up. Yeah, and when she's not here, when Matri is not here and I'm in there alone, she will ask me where she is, and now she know. Now the lady knows that when she's not here, she's usually in Holland or in India or, or somewhere. So, but I remember that. So she asked that straight up, and I was, I was. It took another month or so before I saw her again. But then I said, you know what? I just want to thank you for just asking because in that I really appreciated of her because I know people might think this is weird. He's always with this young woman, and what what are they up to? And she was the only one just straight up asking. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that of her. I said, yeah, I'm just like that. I just call it for what it is. And we, we don't have any, there's no conflict with her, but I'm saying be, the awareness of the potential to accidentally stir something up. Yeah, then I compared you with Yoda. Uh-huh. You never told me that Yoda, huh? Yeah, I said if we are like he's 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 my, my you know my meditation master, just like like in uh, Star Wars, you have a master and student. Yoda, Yoda, that, but, that she can relate. To. That she can relate to. I mean, well, even she now is a with, delightful. Yeah, she's I, just a delightful spirit about her. She's, but now, especially when the in the a, Star Wars where the where there's a female lead and she's going to that island to get trained by I don't know what is his name. But there you go. Here, there's a young woman living on an island alone with an old Jedi. <laughs> no, that's what I'm. I just you can just tell people he's, an old, say, he's, he's an, an old Jedi, Jedi and, I'm, and I'm learning how to to be on the good side. How to to run my how saber to, sword. To, whoosh, how to get into whoosh, the force to feel the force. Whoosh, the return of the Jedi. May the whoosh. force be with you. Yes, but that, yeah. So I, that's why I could actually question. it's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's why I like that movie. But anyway, so that just popped into my mind a That's moment a ago when example. she said that. And so it's not expectation of a problem with this woman, but it's an acknowledgement that in the culture, the, the, what we're doing is not the middle of the bell curve. It's not the norm. Yeah. Hey, Adi. Hey, Adi. Now, Do you? Oh, now, another person pops into mind here. Is a husband and wife who showed up here now about three years ago. 
and they come from good Christian roots. And they showed up here and had been thrown out of something like five different churches because they were asking too many questions and studying the Bible and learning some of the Greek words that the Bible, the, the Western Bible it, it was the, the copies, the ancient copies that are around were written in Greek. The original Aramaic or whatever language it was is no longer available. And so the most ancient stuff that you can get and really look at the original of is the Greek. Well, they started studying Greek. That, so the preachers were getting upset because they're coming in asking questions. They're, too they, smart. They were getting too smart. And all of a sudden they showed up here at the ashram uh, and, and started hanging out around here for a while, a, a lot for maybe two years, I think. And they would come here on the Sundays a lot. And now they have now taken their Sundays back, reclaimed them, and they now go to a church. Yeah, and they are service to the people at the church. And they are of service to the people at the church, and the minister of the church is learning from them yeah. uh, about the subtler meetings of their own religion. Yeah, people are commenting nicely. Yeah, so let's see. It started with Rose, uh, Rose. Roseanne. Having been an artist my whole life, there has been very little criticism on what types of activity. Now, yeah, because everybody knows artists are crazy, right? On the contrary, people are more interested, quite lucky in this life. It is only an AA that I have to be careful. There's another example. For most of the, from, from what I've seen, most of the, uh, the, meaning the human subculture within the AA system, it has a sort of, I don't want to put words out I don't, I don't, accidentally that are not accurate, but it seems to be almost of a religious nature. There's a mindset, there's a collective view in there. And so when you're doing the stuff we're doing in the name of yoga, there can be a pushback there. Not the least of which I think, and you can ponder and say whether there's the degree to which you've run into this, where is the notion that in the AA system of recovery, you have to find a higher power. And for most people, that is a him who is there. And if you start talking about the higher power of Shakti or Atman or Brahman that is within me and is my true nature, there's a potential pushback. I, I've run into quite a few people who have encountered this pushback, literally. Or when they feel more confident in reducing their clashes and stop going to the meetings, and then they get a pushback from because they're afraid that you're falling back instead you are rising upwards to the yeah. next phase of life. You've, we've run into that too. Yeah. And then Adi says, Adi says, Do you agree? Well, first I got to get the hello. Do you agree? <laughs> Do you agree that the further one gets on the path, that the opposition to the normal people gets bigger, but that it gets less discarding to be different? See, I think I'm not sure the word discarding, but I think the spirit of what you're saying is potentially true. And I think being mindful, being aware of, of the spirit of what we're attempting to talk about here this morning, I think helps tremendously. And as you said in the beginning, Samaji, also not to not to expect it because then we might create it ourselves. Yeah. As a as a response, what came up when I read um, what Adi said is that I think in the beginning when I was walking this path, the first few years when I met Swami Z, I think there was more resistance to the people around me that was not involved in what I do because I was still very clumsy and uncomfortable. In and you, sense, you had not gained developed a, yes, sen a, a strong enough sense of confidence in what I was doing. And I have pushed against, I have pushed against people because I labeled them as they are not understanding what I'm doing or this cannot go together. So I have to dump certain people or I yeah. have to, and, and that I come to see in the years gone by that, that that actually has reversed and now it's actually easier. So well, there's and less, it softens, yeah, I there's think. A, it softens. There's less pushback because I 
I personally am not pushing back. And I, on I'm our side, one. there's a greater acceptance that yes. this is just my choice of words in the moment says, well, of course they don't understand what I'm yeah. doing. And it's okay. And I don't have to defend. I don't have to protect. I don't have to you know, justify what I'm doing anymore. And those were all more there in the beginning. And I've hurt people because of that clumsy and uncomfortableness with it. Yeah. Unfortunately, but that's growing and learning. That's again, it pop, pops me back to the bell curve. And is this was one of the insights that I had? I forgot it was 30 years ago, something like that. That I had this tremendous insight one day, it just flashed on me that for all of my life, I was always trying to fit into the group of most people. And I and the flash that I got on that day was wow. It seems like the more I do and the more I grow, the further I become outside of the category called normal yeah. or most people or something like that. And so I think there's a natural pushback coming out of us. So when a person yeah. when, when a person pushes on us, we can accidentally push back on yeah. them. So first of all, I was only comfortable with the people here. Yeah. In the beginning, that was the group, and I was I was pushing against them. Yeah. And now I can move all over the chart, remain true to what I stand for and who I am. But if there's no pushing as I move around in the world as much as I was, significantly now, less, if I may use with, it. Without, if if we're talking about us going this direction, I don't know what I don't want to put a label on this over here. But this is the complete opposite of what we're doing, whatever that would look like. And, and so it's not it's not even this. And so that can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. Yeah, these are still there. there you know, if you look at that. Really strongly fixated into an opinion on something. or very, something very specific. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Two, two. So. And then Leela. But and yes, did we get Adi? Did we respond to that? Normal gets bigger. It's, yeah, it's it bigger. It does seem to get bigger for a while. I think that's what we were saying. But yeah. it gets less discarding. I don't still don't get discarding to be different. Maybe discouraging. Yeah, maybe less discouraging to be different. Less troublesome yeah. to be different. Yeah, I, I think you're on track with that, Adi. Sounds mm -hmm. right to me. Yoda is a good example. So is Mr. Miyagi. Miyagi in the Karate Kid it's movie. Jack, yes. Mr. Miyagi, he's the, he was the old guy, right? Yeah, he's, whatever it is, it's an old guy. <laughs> I'm getting up there. Old guys with white hair. White, yeah. Or no hair. Or no hair. Oh, yes, but indeed, that's nice. And the people understand it when you say it like that. Because those are the comments they know. They don't mind that you spend years and years of training for karate or kung fu in order for the master to get to get to the level of the master. This is far more common known in a sense. So this is what we're doing, hanging around you. Well, I have thought to squeeze the juice, right, Leela? To squeeze it is what they call a plumber or an electrician who has become highly skilled in the trade. They call them a master plumber. Master plumber. And they have an apprentice. And they have an apprentice. Or an intern. Or an intern. <laughs> Whatever. Just some words. Something. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of affection, so I can imagine that people think that we are. Because it's just very unique for people to hang out and be so happy in life. And that's what people start to know around you. You may not understand it in the beginning. Like, what are you doing? And what are you? Why, why are you? What the hell are you smiling did, for? My, and what? And also, what's all this? You know, uh, conversations you're having or satsang you're following. Well, I don't know what you're doing with these people at this ashram. But then after a while, they start to see, not understand, but they start to see that you get lighter or you get happier, you get less grumbly. Or and then when it you're getting a little bit more stressed, we have often heard that husbands or wives say, I think it may be time for you that you go you to the You need to go Asha. back over there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing there, but whatever I it is, it. keep okay. doing it. Yeah. So, and if that is accomplished, and I think that's the most important, even if, a, especially in close relationships in a partnership or yeah. that the other at least sees that it does you good. So there's the many, system. many ways that this thing that we're talking about can play out in our lives. So many 
ways it can play out. But if we're mindful of it, then it smoothens things out. I think one of the very subtle ways in which it, it plays out is, is people just um, stop associating with you. They, they may not even say anything. It's just that they just they, go away. They just go away. Yeah. And it can initially you might feel you might become lonely in some sense. But as Ali, so sort of adding to what Ali said, that as you progress along the path, then you don't feel that it becomes less and less lonely. You just feel complete in yourself. Not really. It's not that you have to push people away from your life, but you are okay being by yourself. Not. Well, you know what you're reminding me of here? We've had some degree of this circumstance, not in these songs, because everybody's sitting in their own home. They're, I mean, Adi and Leela and Ro Roseanne and Rosalind are sitting there making a choice in their own home to sit there and turn on the machine so we can sit here and talk like this. But in terms of local people here, I know they have to get in their car and make a decision to come over here. Yeah. But we've had it happen for a while before we had the before there was this kind of Internet availability to expand the satsang like we do now. Uh, before we had that, local people would come. And uh, now where am I going with what I was saying? Uh, I would accept people sort of where they are and we would end up, we ended up with some very dissatisfied people. It was a pushback because we would have people who wanted to come to the ashram and stay in the living room and have somebody coined the phrase book club. And so to me, when we're going through these texts, the Swami Rama texts or whatever we're going through like that yoga sutras, we are not having a book review. We're looking at principles and practices. We're looking at principles so that we can improve our meditation. But we've had people who want to come here for book club, what they called it, and hated going into the meditation room. Didn't like to go into the meditation room. And, and I think mostly did not go home, did not have a regular practice in their own home, a regular meditation practice. And that's okay, but I'm just saying it's a, in an odd sort of way, it's a, it's a sort of pushback because, you know, what I'm trying to do is with people to, you know, have the subtlest experience of humanity. This is what we keep talking about and trying to move in that direction. And so even within yoga, as we're trying to do it, there's there's other faces of it that there's a pushback or I an opposition. Also, what you brought up was a good example too. Which that I brought up. <laughs> no, the, the one that Rob says that it may not be a in your face oh, you yeah. know, resistance, but that people are just gradually not asking you to, you know, to well, do something. Well, yeah, when he said that, that's what prompted me yeah. to say this. That was, it because was his Because they just gradually disappear and then you're. They just disappear. And, and that indeed, that lonely feeling, because still there's, of course, a part of you. That wants to, to because you're still yeah you're still in the, the process still there mm. of your own activities with other people yeah and this I think we can add is a part of the importance it's of satsang. satsang yep yes and then again it's part of the acceptance yeah without putting names to it which is not important just in the last couple of days I saw a brief exchange in, I don't know if it was a table talk group or this satsang group, might have been in the table talk group, a brief little exchange between two people, you know, commenting to each other and how nice it is to start to get to know you a little bit. And when I, I saw that and I, and it just, it brought to me a smile. It brought to me a smile that said, wow, that's neat. You know, here's a couple of people who don't even, 
live anywhere physically close to each other. And each person in their own way is having this thing that Raj is talking about that other friends and families sort of go away. Oh, we're missing out. We're missing out here. We have a lot of messages. We were with Leela. I also observed Mayor Nilesh says, judging my mate eating group of friends who will tease me being healthy eater. Yeah. Later, that feeling got transformed into friendliness and compassion to them. Great example. Yeah, good example. Thank you, Nilesh. And hello, Gurinder. Hello, Gurvinder. Raj says, a good sponsor does not influence what the protege is experiencing and I through the work. The fourth step, they have here their own experience. It's just that most of their own experience are on the higher level of the bell curve of their experience, not mine. I rarely share my perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and there, there's ah. part of it that is the, I think, I think is the awareness of this phenomenon that we're talking about. So what we can actually naturally do is just keep quiet and don't share our own experience. Which is sometimes the thing to do and sometimes. Yeah, but, it, and, and if we're aware of this, up. then. Ah, and Adi meant distracting. It's less distracting. And distracting, distracting, yes. Thank you. That that that, that makes sense. <laughs> that clarifies that a lot. Thank you. Distracting. Yeah. Discarding. Hmm. It's less distracting. But that's fascinating to bring in the conversation of satsang because we there is something nice about being with other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's part of our makeup, I and like. It even progresses yeah. us on the path. The way that we, all of us together, have been over this last, I guess we start having this kind of, of technology way of being together, what, two years ago, three years ago, three whether years. this or the, the go to meeting a couple of years ago. And, and it has been enjoyable to me to watch the way, uh, this satsang has evolved in a nice way and, and that it's, that people are enjoying it and it's useful. And I look forward to these myself because it's like when it's, when it seems like the world is crazy, it's there's you guys and it's like, wow. It's a different kind of crazy. It's a different kind of crazy. I think a familiar kind of crazy. It's a familiar kind of crazy. That's well put. That's what we all, I think, what human beings have in common. They all like to be around with their own kind of crazy. Yeah. Whatever that may be. But I like the the compassion is increasing in and in, in you're not opposing, as Dilesh says, as much to to others, too. Which is about stabilizing the mind. Being friendly to those who are friendly. Yeah. What else? Are we winding down? I There's one thing, thought stirring in the mind. Okay. That, let me see if I can. You'll do it. Um, I'm out it, of hot chocolate. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, I me too, Samizi. Is that um, hi, Teria? Uh, in a way, internet made it possible to live twelve years with you, Swamiji, without being together in the ashram. Yes. Who said that? Adi. Adi, there. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. But he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Yes. For two full weeks, I think. I can remember, Adi, when discussion forums with keyboards was the thing going on. And during that period, window of 10 to 15 years ago, I finally I came to the conclusion that in relation to sadhana and all of this, Internet is absolutely 100% useless. This was the conclusion I came to. And and. and 
it, um, I'll get back to differ. It, no, it, it internet has evolved and the technology has improved. I know as here's an example. I know that Facebook can be a pain in the ass. And as so many people, I, I don't do that because it's so bad. There's so much criticism we can give of Facebook. But those people as a corporation, to me, have just improved and improved and improved their technology. I remember when they first invented groups and I first was looking at a group on there. I had a Yahoo group going. And, and, and I, here came this Facebook and they had groups. And I don't even remember now how bad it was, but it was terrible. It was just about useless. But they have improved and improved and improved. And now the technology, if we limit it to that, we don't get lost in the chaos, in the craziness of the Facebook world. And we focus ourselves on, on, on a few places and we use it like we're doing in these groups then I find this technology extremely useful. And then to be at the ability to do video on top of that is ends up being icing on the cake, so to speak. And, and as a company, those people have improved and improved and improved. And so then when the Udemy people showed up and, and I remember, remember what we went through learning how to do this and we didn't know what kind of camera to buy and, and all of this stuff trying to figure out how to use this. And so now we have that as a means, as a medium by which we can present stuff to people. Then, then we get to come together, all of us, and have conversations in this kind of way. And so as Adi said there for 12 years, we've been able to do something with all of these things. And then notice how fun it is when we happen to be together. And Adi, Adi's coming here in less than a month for a few days, and he and Yvonne. And, and that's going to be fun. So when we use all of this cyberspace satsang means, then when we, when we are able to have a Skype conversation, a one-to-one -one conversation, it's naturally richer. When we're together face to face, it's naturally richer. And so it all works together. Kelly is here. Hi, Kelly. She likes the topic today. I just thought of saying that your camera seems dirty, which leaves the viewer view blurry. Ah. I don't think the camera is. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I'll take a little. It's just it's a built in thing. I can take a little alcohol Q-tip alcohol and try to clean it. But I I'm my, that maybe that's it. But yeah. I th isn't it just the resolution of this? We maybe the laptop? MacBook is like a little old or because we're in side by side doesn't know where to focus. Maybe. And a whole high tech yoga studio at the Ashram. Now, who said that to us? It was Kelly. Blur, it was Kelly. Do you know, Kelly, is there such a thing as the little camera? I mean, it's it's only about, what's that, about two millimeters? That little hole there? Yeah. You know millimeters. That's about an eighth of an inch. Yeah. No, it's, it's two millimeters. It's, it's about two millimeters. That's about it. Yeah. It's a tiny little thing. I've never heard, not once have I ever heard anybody talk about cleaning your camera lens on a two millimeter camera lens. No, but I can see we're a little bit. Little bit no, I've been noticing yeah. that, but I thought it was just attributable to this computer. Yeah, I think so too. Because the other computer in the office, that big computer, it has a better resolution, but it just inherently has a more detailed resolution than but this I one. But I think was. it would be worth it to try just for fun. Who knows? I, we can try it. Because it's, it's it is pretty Well, go easy. get a Q-tip. Yeah, but we need some cleaning. We'll do that after satsang. I'll get some of that no, 99% just, stuff. No, just go get one off the back of that little counter thing. There. And we'll see what that does. Thank you. Oops, no. We're going to try it here. And Kelly can give us the official feedback here. Yeah. Okay, here is without. Wow! <laughs> did it did it help? Yeah, look at that. Did it help? <laughs> yeah, it did. 
it did help. Kelly? <laughs> Kelly? We, There's a delay, Sandy. You know, she's the one that had that eagle eye to spot the problem, so now we should rely. Do you see a difference, right? Uh, oh, yeah, a little bit. No alcohol. Oh, okay. Better. <laughs> Much better. Who said no alcohol? Oh, um, Roz. Yeah. Well, thank you for see we see that what go woof 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 woof. You know why? No. Because we're old dogs learning new, new tricks. tricks. I see. Cool. Thank you, Kelly. That wow, was... that was no. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, oh. Whoops. We accidentally moved it. Rosalind says it's better too. Ro Roseanne says it's much better. Instant attenuation of the samskaras. Yes, see, this was the clouded laptop. It's like the mind gets clouded, the laptop camera gets. Oh, that's what I need. I need some alcohol to clear it up, my clouded mind, huh? Yeah, no Q tip. Because that's all we did. We That's no all alcohol. I did. No alcohol. No alcohol. Oh, no I thought alcohol. something. Uh, Somebody said no alcohol. No alcohol. But indeed, like, just like you clean your glasses, you just need some water in the worst case. There was no water. No water. Just. Ha, ha 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 ha. That is a huge. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. And I was seeing if we did not. Miss oh, look at that. Yeah, really enlightened, Ramana said. We got enlightened. Boy, we all got enlightened now. Just had a big word attack. Johnny did. What what big word did he use? I don't know. What well, we don't see the big word that you use, Johnny. Maybe it's better down, more down. Well, how far down? I don't know because there we were just here. There, Johnny. There, discombobulated. Sometimes it's better to be gregarious. Curious. As, as well, well as, as garrulous, we way beyond me. Yeah, sometimes it's better to be by oneself. It's, it's only, only when, when I, I get, get garrulous. Well, yeah, you're right. This is too big a <laughs> word for me. <laughs> it's so funny. You start looking over my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. The what I've heard called the yoga police. Yeah, that's the thought that's roaming in my mind that I'll say. But let's see what other comments there are. Because there's Roslyn in terms. Uh, there's a yippee. Yippee for, yeah, that was for Adi when he, that's his, that he's coming here. Yippee. Satsang is communion with that is the truth. Hanging out in truth. Yeah, that's where we left off. Uh-huh. Now we can go up. That's Kelly's comment. Okay. And, and, and Mir, Mir said here. hello. Mir is just sitting there saying hello and quietly taking it in. Yeah. And we have yeah. a whole high-tech yoga studio at the ashram. That's yeah. what I call the studio. Indeed, the green screen. We call it the, I call it the yoga studio. Yeah. It's not what everyone would think of a yoga studio. In terms of study, the only place available was an ashram. And in that way, one was stuck with whatever perspective those people had. Sometimes they were uh, too commercial and not interested in meditation. That was too advanced. That was too advanced. Hey, did all of you see that conversation we had with Ragini yesterday? That was wonderful. If you haven't seen it, take a look at it. It was a delightful conversation. And it will be. And she told a couple really neat Swami Rama stories. I think Ragini is now in her 40s, and I, I don't know the exact date. I didn't ask her like this, but I think she first met Swami Rama at the institution in the U.S. Uh, somewhere, uh, uh, probably in her late teens or maybe 20 years old. And so That's it was. Well, it could be. I don't know. But, you know, I've gotten so old that everybody, you know, everybody seems young. And so. And so some years ago. But it was a delightful conversation. A delightful conversation. And I got a couple other people in queue who are 
old timers around tradition and all, who I'm probably going to be able to sweet talk into doing that. And uh, instant attenuate, we had that one. Okay, we're back to the ha ha ha. The longest word is smiles. Soft cloths that you use for glasses. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I but, but I don't. But this is a little. I mean, literally, it's only two millimeters. Two millimeters. So this okay, little thing is. here. But now I stuck one in my nose, so yeah, I won't so use don't. it again. I recognize what Ma said in the beginning of a new path. I lack some confidence to talk to others with that confidence about what keeps me busy. And then gradually you get more comfortable and it just naturally starts to be part of who you are. And then thus, yeah, you don't have to resist other people as much as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so there is, it's, it's the companion to the opposition. What did I, how did I word this? Living with the opposition to traditional so people yoga. Will be, so uh, people could can be have, have oppositional to this. And, and then we, we can accidentally react to that. And, and and so then you end up with two people pushing back. Yeah. And the one you can take full responsibility of is yourself. Yeah. But I think there's great value in being aware of the environment. Another thing, and that's because... And being aware of this phenomenon. Curve. This is the best image I've come up with of, of being aware of that, is that whatever we're doing, we're not in this chunk. And... And in all likelihood, the <clears throat> external world is not going to change so that this becomes this. It's probably not going to happen. Probably has never been like that. No. Probably never has, probably yeah. never will be. But I don't know. Who knows? The thought that is stirring uh, some idea is that um, because it's just something that I am actively probably with. Stirring thought. Is that uh, when you say opposing, what was it? Opposed, the uh, living with the... Opposition. Opposition. And then what was the rest of traditional? Opposition to traditional, traditional yoga. yoga. That, of course, also that includes that not everyone knows what traditional yoga is about and thus lives in a sort of bubble of what yoga is. Yeah, I and just use that own, term because yeah, we just, use that term. Yeah, no, what I, else do you call it? I know. And so um, I think the key aspects of the traditional yoga is when you really walk the path towards yoga is about setting aside uh, false identities and the but if if a lot of other people or the other people that just walk on the world they 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 grow into whatever false identity they feel safe in yeah. if it's religion and thus also yoga has become an an identity that a lot of people take on because then they are part of the group and it comes with certain rules unwritten rules it comes with certain way you have to live and dress and be and behave. And um, there's a lot of people uh, also then making fun of that again. But I think um, the, the tendency I think that we have is to, um, is to maybe unconsciously, mostly unconsciously probably look for what, how do I have to behave? Who do I have to be to how be? How do I conform? How do I conform to to the path that I'm walking? And so I think um, as I myself over the years have really come to see that there is no rule book and that there is no identity to take on. And, and that also can be causing some oppositions, I've noticed. For yeah. example that um, uh, someone in Holland who will not mind telling me this um, uh, was doing back in the day some construction work or some some very just easy, simple job on a convey belt. Well, that was not considered to be yogic yeah. at all by some of the modern yoga people because you have to be a teacher. You have to be a yoga teacher. Otherwise, you don't really practice yoga. And I can see how easily it would be to feel that safeness, to to conform to some kind of um, idea of how I should behave or how I should be. So we end up accidentally looking for some organizational setting that I can then be a member of, so to yes. speak. Yes. 
And so when you keep poking fun at that habit in generally and not poking for your 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 poke you're trying to wake us up from that and uh, that can cause a lot of resistance too by other people who do try to conform to some kind of mm -hmm. you see what i'm trying to say that was I just a so. thought what i the part of trying to help guide you into not falling into that trap yes and that has been a tremendous um, thing you have been able to, I think, and you have pretty seen much examples where I have not been able to succeed in that, and we have watched some very, very nice people fall into some pretty deep traps. Yes, that is true. And so it's a, it's another face of, I think, essentially the same phenomenon that maybe the words that we chose, that I chose, were clumsy, but there's a spirit behind it that there's a pushback that's very common or an opposition or what was the other words? To not conform even to a spiritual identity, I think that. There's, that's there's a, that's a, a part of it. Yeah. That, uh, and this is what I thought was super fun. I mean, the first person I met when I was here was, besides Swami Jay, of course, was Leela. And of everyone who knows Leela knows that she's, you know, she's unique. And she was wearing her... Uh, blue jeans. What is it when you have the blue jeans up to here? Yeah. Oh, the the work the workers. Yeah, when you have you know, know the blue jeans called. is with here and it goes over your. It's with the two, pants and the that. thing are all one piece, piece. and and it's you see workers doing it. Yeah, and painters then, do it and yeah, and so she was, and she was wearing that and was totally not conformed to any kind of spiritual mm -hmm. identity that I thought we should have. I just overalls, have, yes. Overalls, that's thank you. Called. I just thank came you, from awesome. I just came from India and and there Swamiji was wearing his nice Swami clothes and he was wearing his shawl and he looks very elegant when you do that. You look you look very Swami like. And there we were on the Ganges and everything was be <laughs> beautiful as some pops up in my mind again. And so it's very easy to say that traditional yoga has some kind of spiritual identity that you have to take on. And then the next thing was that I saw Swamiji at the airport of Fort Walton Beach in his shorts with his wife beater shirt and a pickup truck that says Swami J. And then a week or two later, here comes Leela. So it was, you know, <laughs> shock. <laughs> just I can't play with Leela. I know she's laughing right now, hopefully. And so. So I think this is also that we that you can maintain having a playful identity, that you can maintain doing things that people would otherwise not, you know, have do think as spiritual or something, and then that resistance towards that. You still go to movies, or you still, and then we learn to really live this. And this is maybe because I bring this up because this is something that I've been through, and maybe mm -hmm. you have not. So. Are you saying that we all have to find our own unique path? I think that's the key in a sense. And uh, of course, we can play together and learn tremendously from each other. But that really is how we really there's, get there's free. There's something to that. Yeah. And yet at the same time, this is my playful metaphorical way of saying it. In the, in the metaphor of spiritual life being like climbing to the top of a mountain, we can say it's very common to say there's many paths up the top, up the mountain. But I like to say, but let's remember that there's only one direction and that's called up. So, so up the mountain is the direction to go. So the thing that makes it, I'm just trying to respond in some way, Adi. The thing that makes it unique and the thing that makes it not at all unique is that everybody goes the same direction called up. If you happen to be symbolically living on the east side of the mountain, the direction for you to go is west. If you're living on the west side of the mountain and you pick up the wrong book, you order the wrong book from Amazon, and it says the way to truth is to walk to the west, you're walking away from the mountain. And that's a silly way of saying it. But the, but the general book is so go up. The, the, the thing <laughs> yeah. that they all have in common <laughs> is up. Uh, very nice. Unique path, one go, indeed. That's nicely, nicely said. And yet, in some sense, there's nothing unique at all. And this Because is we're all operating it exactly the same way. Because we're all trying to go. It's all glaciers. It's all avidya. It's all about viveka and concentration. Just the obstacles are different.
Yes, the, in the, the, the unique yeah, appearing. The nature of the yeah. obstacles is the same. Yeah. yeah. The specifics are different. different. The nature of the obstacles, there are many ways to say it, but the nature of the obstacles can easily be summarized in the five clashes that Patanjali outlines in the beginning of chapter two of Yoga Sutras. Everybody, I know you all remember what they are. Remember? Number one is... I was reading Avidya. Avidya, Asmita, Raga, Divesha, Abhinivesha. Do we get a gold star? Sure. Cool. It is the path of spiritual mastery. We can have guides along the way and the grace of Guru, but we may never get that on our path. Um, but we may never get that on our path. It's up to us and no one else. And this is a hard lesson for folks to learn. Yeah, but we will get that. This is a core principle. We've all heard it before. Grace of Guru. If we think that Guru is a human being person, then we're in trouble. But if we understand that grace of guru is a stream of consciousness, then you end up with a very different thing. Then the principle that, that applies is if we're really sincere and we're dedicated in what we're doing, somebody will show up in front of us to provide the next missing piece. This seems to be true may not be in the form that we expect, may not be that olive-skinned, gray-bearded Indian man living in the high mountains. It's a white American. God forbid it's a woman. You know. Oh, and, and she's just a baby. Isn't that one needs a society to belong to, Mira is inquiring. The religion, which is one of them, but then when it doesn't satisfy the inquiry, Leaving creates a vacuum, and then one goes to another, to other groups. When it doesn't satisfy, you leave a vacuum, you go to other groups. I think there's a, I, I think I understand the spirit of where you're coming from with that. Knowing what he's and, and, and I know you're not accidentally meaning to say, because it's very common for people to shop around for spiritual traditions. I'm going to do this one this year, and next year I'm going to quit that, and I'm going to go do that one over there. And we keep shopping around. There's the old drill a well to find water. And you drill, I drill a one-meter well here. I don't find water. So I go over there a little while away, and I drill another well that's also one meter deep. And yeah. I keep saying there's no water anywhere. You gotta go four meters deep. You gotta go, you gotta keep drinking deep. And so mm -hmm. there is this habit that's easy to have happen accidentally to keep switching wells. But there is a time where what we're doing in the mountain metaphor, you, where you discover what I'm doing is I keep going around the base of the mountain and, and the, and what I'm doing is just I'm with a uh, I'm I'm with a group of people that all we're doing is sightseeing in the valleys, and when the day comes, you say, "But I want to get to the top of the mountain." Then you 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 have to sort of turn away from that group of valley dwellers. Mm -hmm. I noticed in the Berkeley Hills in California, the Berkeley Hills. It's beautiful up on the Berkeley Hills. There's some very, very nice, expensive houses up there. And the, there's a ridge. There's a ridge line here. And when you look out to the west, there's San Francisco Bay. And on the other side over there is San Francisco. And over there is the Golden Gate Bridge. And it's, it's beautiful like that. But I noticed on the Berkeley Hills, the road going up there zigzags and goes up higher and higher and higher. So you're going down a road there. And so everywhere on that road, off one side, like if you're in your car out that window, you look out and you see San Francisco Bay. And you look out this window, you're looking into the mountain. Well, the houses on this side of the road are, are not as expensive as the ones on this side. The ones that are on the edge of the mountain have a beautiful view out there costs more money. But notice the humor of it. 
You say, I want to get a big house up on the mountain so I can get a view of the valley. Of the valley. It means we're attached to the view of the valley. Very much so. I noticed that riding up there one day when I lived in that area, riding up there. I said, wow, isn't this amazing? We want a big fancy house so we can look back at the valley that we're trying to escape from. Nobody wants a house that looks at the top of the mountain. Nobody wants a house that looks at the top of the mountain. I also like to look down. Look, look at like, well, yeah. I'm, I'm not part of that. And, and I'm just thinking of that because I think it's, it's I gorgeous. think it's characteristic of our human condition. Yes. And and if I may make it, I think what he also is personally has been through is that he has been finding that a, the group that is not satisfying has been moving further or expanding his view but then to actually find out that what he was looking for was also in that which you were first a part of and thus can be comfortably stay within that group without feeling that resistance anymore yeah and, and i so, said that vaguely enough yeah, so but, that, that i think that makes sense yeah in the path is Oh yeah, okay. It's all about Om. It's all about Om and the, the silence, silence after, after the Om. There's a basic structure of systematic practice, and each of us weaves the unique pattern of how we live our lives in the greater context of the basic structure. Very well said nice. and summarized, yeah. Leela. And everybody remember that a few hours from now we'll be together with preacher Leela. Hello, Michelle. I found that we need to experience what we are reading about. Then our knowledge becomes an experience. Then we slowly, and uh, we slowly expect of the aspect aspect of the group. We slowly. There's a verb missing there. Yeah, we I slowly think. <laughs> aspect. You hit the nail, ma. You okay. hit the nail. Bang. <laughs> Got the nail. Nailed it. Boom. <laughs> carpenter. Oh, ye carpenter <laughs> that you are. I, when you were talking about the Berkeley Hills, I was with Mira up nearby Kilimanjaro. Yeah, you are on Kilimanjaro. Meet. Yeah, okay, right there it is. Ah, uh, meet. We slowly we meet, meet aspects, aspects of, of the growth. That's a yeah, big, that, nice. that, I knew there was, that's a good yeah. word. Thank you. Then that makes it make perfect sense. Have to go. Bye, Annika. We're all going to yeah, go it's, here. It's about time. And so remember, we're going to be together with the preacher in five hours. Five hours. And I'm that here, will Lila. be fun. And I she's won't miss here, it. Leila. And so where was the, I saw an ohm down here. There, Ro. Ro again has the. Yeah, it's all about, Roseanne is always good with the last word. It's all about ohm and the silence after the ohm. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. So be aware of any opposition and then. Yeah, learn just, to be just, unaffected just by be it. aware and be unaffected. And, and compassionate. To yourself and others. And and we just keep playing with this stuff. Yeah. All righty. Say bye, Ma. Bye, Ma. Bye bye. <laughs> Raj says bye. He didn't say bye he didn't say bye, Ma. He said bye bye. Bye. But the principle is there. Dewey dewey for the Dewey Dewey for the Duchies. Om Tatsa. Om Tatsa.